Donna Curse from Melrose with Kayla. Seven year old Jack Russell. Part of Agility Team GB. And away we go. Donna and the Jack Russell. And we know ooh, there's a bit of there's a bit of miscommunication there and there's faults. And at this level of competition, faults and hesitation and lost seconds pushes you way down the order. You have to be on the ball every second of the of the of the time of this course really. All she did then was just Missed time her signal, and the dog said, "Okay, that's what we wanted to do," but it was at the wrong time. So, but she's only lost just a little bit of time here. Five faults though. Got to go quick now, and it's only a small dog. Great effort. 42 seconds for Donna Curse from Melrose and for Kayla. Down into seventh then, because of those just little faults on that round. Rosie Cavill from Newport in South Wales with Dare, Cocker Spaniel, six years of age. Regular with Wales at uh, World Championships. Uh, this dog, as I understand it, a little bit of time uh, to find her confidence. And you need to be a very confident animal to compete here and slightly reluctant to go away there, possibly, well, Graham. Although this dog's won on a challenge certificate, what you have to remember is that it will have probably won it outside or maybe an indoor riding school where it's quite quiet apart from a few other dogs this is a totally totally different game massive massive experience for it the green carpet the, the lights the great big crowd we've got in here this morning so uh, and again if you've got a slightly nervous dog but there's nothing better to boost the dog's confidence than doing agility absolutely and looking a confident dog and certainly clear round thus far not the quickest but rosie won't worry too much about that Dare going really well. Biggest stage in her life for Dare. 43.2 and a clear round for Rosie. And that's seventh place for Rosie and Dare from Newport in South Wales. Nicely down the A-frame there. Look at those ears. Nice control again. Here we go. Ashley Butler with Sullivan, four-year-old crossbreed. What did she say to us before this started? No commentator's curses, if you would. Yeah, she said, don't say anything too nice about it, she said, because it'll all go wrong, she said, so I'm actually not going to say very much here, Jim, it's down to you. OK, well, Ashley Butler with Sullivan, first time competing at Crufts. Winners of the small singles on Friday, very, very impressive, and no matter what we say up here, it's not going to make any difference, really. Ashley Butler and Sullivan have already established a fantastic relationship, working very well, working very quickly too. Just a slight hesitation at the end of the seesaw, but in perfect sync, 36.5 is the best time. It's going to threaten it, it's going to threaten it, and it is just outside it by the margins, absolute fractions that Charlotte Harding is, but that's very, very good. We'll be seeing that pairing again, don't worry about that. It was, you say, a fraction outside, the reason she's a fraction outside is because she wanted to make sure the dog got that contact point. In the final, if she gets there, you will not see her do that little pause. And is she happy? You bet your life we are. Happy dog, happy handler. Looking at Dexter, Jack Russell, eight years of age. Glenn Smart, the handler from Newton Abbey in Northern Ireland. Rescued from a dog's trust at one years of age. First time at Crufts for both of these two. And a very familiar pairing, this, and to you, Green. Yes, I actually gave uh, the dog its uh, certificate this year when I judged in Northern Ireland. Glenn's actually looking just a, just a little bit serious today. He's normally got a smart, permanent smile on his face. Uh, but he, and I think he's worried because this dog is liable to do anything, if I'm honest with you, and he doesn't want to make himself look a complete fool, but he won't do that. He's a great guy, great dog, great partnership. Generosity of the crowd here, just looking around me, close to 6,000 inside already. 
real generous crowd that appreciate the efforts of handlers and the dog, but it does concentrate the mind, and it might just make you look a little bit serious as well. But well done to Glenn and well done to Dex. It's a clear round. It's not the quickest we've seen. 47.8 uh, uh, for Glenn, but it is clear, which is excellent. It was, but I think Dexter, about halfway round, realised that people were watching him and laughing at him, and he thought, I'm going to have a little bit of this atmosphere, he said. He said, look at me, he says, look. There you go. <laughs> look, oh, hello, here I am, he says, can you see me, he says. <laughs> That'll look round. Big crowd in here, isn't there? <laughs> Louise Cadman from Winsford in Cheshire with Twiggy, seven-year-old cross, second time at Crofts. Penultimate small dog, this. Very low over those jumps. Again, it's going. And Twiggy going. Oh, and that's an elimination. That's a shame. Wrong course for Twiggy, but the round will be completed. As Graham has told me repeatedly over the last few days, the dog does not know that she has been eliminated. And listen, you don't get to perform here that often. Why not make the most of it? You know, but and the, the point here is, is that don't tell the dog it's gone wrong. The dog hasn't gone wrong. You've done something wrong as a handler because if the dog goes wrong, you've either told it to go there or you haven't trained it properly in the first place. So always, always finish on a great note with the dog. As I say, he's just having, doing what he's been told. So we say farewell to Louise Cadman and to Twiggy. This is Coco, last of the small dog, six-year-old working Cocker Spaniel, Catherine Stickney from North Taunton in Devon. Her first agility dog in the Great Britain team for the World Championships in Spain. This dog loves a bit of running on Dartmoor, loves a bit of swimming as well. And now we have to hope that agility is... Uh, what she loves to do and loves to do successfully and a slight hesitation coming off the dog walk. A little slip and a slide in the weaves as well for Coco. Coco, but that's a great A-frame. Picking up a bit of speed now, Coco and Catherine. Slightly down on time, but it's OK and it could well be good enough. Oh, now it's gone wrong. Now it has gone wrong. Now that is a proper commentator's course. It was. She just relaxed. She thought, I've got this now, it's in the bag. Uh, all I've got to do is just, just call the dog and she was much too late. Just a little bit of stumble there. You can just see slopping and then he caught its shoulder. Such a shame. So unfortunately we won't be seeing her. But as you say, first agility dog to get it up to grade seven, be competing here at Crufts. She's got to be pleased with that. This competition only open to the very best. Grade seven, the best dogs that you can have and here we have the result of what we have just seen Charlotte Harding and Ashley Butler only ones in the 36 seconds we can expect them to be renewing hostilities later today building up to a fantastic final this one looking for the combined results as well there is a little bit of sorting out before we get the final running order uh, for the all-important uh, evening session and this is how the combined is looking so far and so close between Ashley and, and Charlotte at the top and we should be taking I think the top eight of those that's subject to confirmation from the official scorers but I believe we should be taking the top eight through to this evening's final Thank you, Graham. So just resetting the course now for the large dogs, and the hurdles are going to be set at 65 centimetres. And for those of you that are interested in who are watching this, we define a large dog at the Kennel Club as over 43 centimetres. Oh, I do beg your pardon. I'm talking a load of rubbish as usual. No, 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 Graham. No. It's, it's a medium. It's a medium dog. You've been an absolute stalwart alongside me <laughs> ever since Thursday morning. We'll it's get them to judge, jump 45 centimetres instead <laughs> then. Medium dogs, first to go, first to 13, Gilly Sayer and Tico 
rescue from Morgan's rescue in Cumbria. <laughs> I'm still chuckling about Graham saying he's talking rubbish. He is, goodness knows what I'm talking, but there we go. In from the right-hand side of the weaves is Tico. Six-year-old Golly Cross Shelty. Getting us going with our last section, which is the medium section, all trying to be Crufts Agility Champion later today. Steady round for this pairing for Jilly and for Tico. Just losing a bit of time at the end there. 42.7. I just get the impression there might be one or two quicker dogs to follow. It was really good start. Very solid. What the people at home don't seem to realise, it's a very serious mistake I've made because it's going to cost me a round of tea and coffees this afternoon in the canteen. Here's Danny, Danny Clark, Polgate in East Sussex with Kelly, 10-year-old Border Collie. Probably her last competitive outing and sadly picking up five volts and more. Ten volts for a couple of refusals and, and a pole has gone down. Sadly for Danny and Kelly, the faults adding up, and it's fair to say 15 faults um, probably mean that this will be her last competitive run of Kelly, the 10-year-old Border Collie, are here at Crufts. Picking up an early couple of faults, and, and when you do that, your mind is, is, is back five or ten seconds thinking about the fault you've just had, why did it happen, etc. Then you're not concentrating on the moment, and then it just goes downhill from there. But a great effort, just finishing on 15 faults, we think, no. Nope. And unfortunately, getting an elimination, so we definitely won't be seeing that pairing, but well done to them. Danny Clark and Kelly uh, sadly eliminated, the faults piled up, and the elimination from our judge, uh, Nick Robson, came right at the end of, of a problematical round for Danny and for Kelly. This is Mitzi, five-year-old Yorkshire Terrier cross Sue Cooper from Oswald Street in this year's British squad. And very keenly and quickly into her work is Mitzi. Tail wagging, barking, tight turn through the weaves. That's one of the quickest we've seen through the weaves as well. Real appetite for work has Mitzi. And this is really good, and it's quick as well from Mitzi over the wall. That's, that's excellent. And the seesaw is developing into a really quick and successful round. Last, last hurdle, we are over. 39.2 for Mitzi and for Sue Cooper. Number one in the medium dogs as things stand. Fast, frenetic, really keeping Sue on her toes there. Yorkshire Terrier cross. And there we are, just got it. And that's why, as a judge, you have to watch the contact area and not the dog. Here's Nicola Wildman, been there and done it, has Nicola. 11-year-old Kelpie, Zoom. Final event this before Zoom retires. And oh, oh my goodness, that is an elimination and we will just underline the reason why at the end of this round. But that was right at the start, and that's quite sad, really, because um, last agility run for the 11-year-old Kelpie, and things going wrong at the start. But fair play to Nicola, who has terrific experience in this sport. Nicola taking Kelpie round and completing what is likely to be fair farewell appearance. Such a shame. I know she would have liked to uh, have finished this dog's top-class career. Uh, on a high here at Crofts, certainly with a clear round at least. Uh, it really has been. We're going to sorely miss this dog. It's been great entertainment over the years and done Nicola very, very proud. Let's just tidy things up for, for us, for Graham, about what exactly happened at the start there. Well, he, the handler walked out, took her eyes off the dog, and the dog broke its weight. So she didn't see it coming behind her, and because it wasn't told where to do, it did the wrong jump. Such a shame. Sean Illingworth second this morning with maybe 
Crufts champion in 2015, European champion in 2013, Olympia winner in December. Watch this combination very closely. Expected to go a long way in this competition. Great start. Really quick. Scuttling over the dog wall. Excellent. The weaves. That's the way to go through those. In the right side of the tunnel as well. Just 20 seconds on on the time there. That is really good. Looks as if it keeps going. I'm sure it's going to be inside the 39. Keeps going, of course, without any mishaps. This has been a lovely round. This has been so quick. Absolutely excellent. Oh, well inside it. Three seconds inside it. That's the way to do it, Graham. Nailed it. And uh, I think she's got another mile or so, in a mile an hour or so in her, in her tank, really. Um, what she wanted to do was put in a really, really good round she could uh, to get a clear round, and then we will see her uh, just take the stopper out, I think, this evening. Ashley Butler, Pudsey, guaranteed a huge reception here. Pudsey's last year competing at Crufts, withdrawing from top class of Benting, but still active and a very competitive dog, now 11 years of age. Away goes Pudsey, away goes Ashley. Yep, this is Pudsey's stage. It seems a shame almost that we're not going to be seeing Pudsey here again in competition. There is plenty left in Pudsey's locker and in Ashley as well. And Ashley, I'm sure, will want to take Pudsey out. Not at this stage, in the final later this afternoon, and it's looking pretty good at the moment. 30 seconds on the clock. Pudsey just slowing slightly towards the end of the round, perhaps. Needs a quick little finish, it's clean. And it is 41.9 for Ashley and for Pudsey. Good enough for third place, Graham. Yeah, really good. Ashley's hugely competitive, she'll want to go out on a high. And although we may not be seeing Pudsey uh, much more at Cross, we certainly will be seeing him doing pantomime, I think he's in again this year, <laughs> and a lot more media work. So you won't be the last we see of Pudsey. Looking at Jessica, seven-year-old working sheepdog. Jackie Tarn, very experienced handler out of Barnard Castle. Bit of a wide turn. Dropped a little bit of time, but it's a fast dog, is Jessica, the working sheepdog. Made the contact safe, but just a slight bit of hesitation with the quality of the competition up where it is. Hesitation and wide turns just will not be tolerated, it'll push you down the order. A frame, little hesitation at the top there, made the contact safely, but wasn't the quickest. It's still clean and it's reasonably quick, it could keep them in the final shake-up, this. Jackie and Jessica turning quickly, 43.1 for Jessica uh, and for Jackie, and that is fifth place. And they are intentional hesitations on the end of these contact areas. She, she said to the judge, you have a good look at this because I've got it. And, and she keeps it clear. Stephen Richardson from Wigton with Libby, ten and a half years of age. Winner of the medium cross singles here a couple of days ago. Winning pedigree already then. And huge experience too. Beautiful sight, Libby, the crossbreed on the dog walk. Ten and a half years of age. Just to remind everybody at home: if you don't know anything about agility, you can't start competing at kennel club events until the dog's at least 18 months of age. After that, there's no operation limit. We've had got lots of dogs in this final here that are 10 and 11 years of age. So just get out there and have some fun with your dog. Never too late to start, Jim. Stephen and Libby have started and finished pretty well. 39.9 inside the 40 seconds uh, for Stephen and for Libby, and up into the top three they go. A very competent round, and we will be seeing them again in the final. <laughs> Natasha Wise, best this morning in the jumping winner, 2014 and 2016. With Dizzy, 11 years of 
age. Love this competition, Graham, and have been hugely successful in recent years. You can't get much more successful than being three times world champion, six times Olympia champion, probably uh, one of the best agility dogs we've ever seen in the world, never mind in this country. Natasha is a consummate professional. She will have prepared for this almost 12 months ago. Um, she, she does, you wouldn't believe this, and I'm giving a little secret away here. She does get really, really nervous. You do not want to go anywhere near Natasha about five minutes before her run, I can tell you. This is looking very good for Natasha and for Dizzy. 36 seconds, the best so far. They're going to threaten it, I am sure, if they negotiate the last couple here. 36.9. Natasha and Dizzy threaten Sean Illingworth. Both in the 36s, just in second place, though. Natasha, an outstanding round, though. Look at that, totally focused. All that dog's doing is just saying to Natasha, where do you want me to go? Total attention, total professionalism, and that's what it's all about. Phoenix handled by Linda Cummings from Durham. Working sheepdog. Nice start to the round from Phoenix. Very quick, just a little bit of time loss going into the tunnel. Making the contact safely, that's what they all have to do. Judge Nick Robson watching very closely. Tail wagging, tiptoeing through the weeds. Good pace, this is impressive from Linda and from Phoenix. Nice tight turn, A-frame is good. How about the seesaw? Yep, fine. Nice quick finish is called for a bit of hesitation going into the tunnel. Shame that. Bit of time lost going into the tunnel. And that's 40.2 seconds for Linda and for Phoenix, and that is in the top five. Really good, not too much time lost, but great, great style going through there. Push round the back, and now the dog thinks it's the A-frame, but it's not, it's the tunnel. Corrected it in time, no faults. Max ready to go, the Patterdale Terrier, handled by Jennifer Kent from Perth in Scotland. Second time competing at Crofts, just a reminder, up to 50% of the dogs will be eliminated from the competition before the grand final later today. Jennifer Kent and Max will hope they are not one of them, and they've picked up five faults. Bottom of the dog walk, missing the contact point. One or two of the dogs painstakingly going over the dog walk, making sure they made that contact, and if you don't do it, as we've seen there, Graham, you get punished. You do, and I judge Nick Robson was right on top of it, putting himself in the best position to see it. We don't have the luxury of uh, third match officials or replays and agility, and that's quite right too. Judge's decision is final, but this is a good round still. A little bit steady, but 44 seconds, five points. 44 seconds for Jennifer Kent and Max. Puts her in ninth place with those five faults. And over the dog walk, and just a white point there. You have to make contact. Rumble, crossbreed, four-year-old from Coventry, handled by Joe Gleed, a very honest and easy-going dog. And it's going to have to go pretty sharpish. No easy-going here to make this afternoon's final. Good over the dog walk. Picking up a bit of pace now, Rumble and Joe. 36 the time to beat anything around 37 38 will do absolutely fine for these two and they're well up with things at the moment as well seesaw fine scuffled over that through the tunnel as well the tight turn that is a tight turn well done up in the 40s 40.4 but it is clear for joe and for rumble and that is sixth place and happy with that she will be kept it really tight Great big jump out over the spread. Well done, Joe. Worked it right till the end. Last of the medium dogs, then Samantha Lane and Dime from Milton Keynes. Her first ever agility jog, dog and second. Looking to be a champion as well. Can get a bit excited, can go a bit wild. Can Dime, the nine year old copper spaniel. No, not the weaves. You've got to go through the tunnel first. Dime. Dropping a bit of time there. Good over the dog walk, though. Now you can go through the weeds. Letting us know. 
die, but he is there. Good, tight work there. This is a good round. This is well up with the time, and it's clean. From Samantha and from Dine. Just need a sharp and clear finish, and they could be around for the final shake-up. You never know. 40 and clear for Samantha and for Dime, and that is fifth place. Could well put them in the mix. They had five faults carried over from this morning, so we'll just now have to wait and see. Anxious moments for everybody, but very well done indeed to Dime. Great appetite for the course. Great appetite for agility. And here we go, our winner today, Sean Illingworth, only just then from Nat Natasha Wise, and those two really in a class of their own, three seconds quicker than the rest of the field. And the reminder that uh, things have to be sorted out before the final at 4.45. And I believe it's going to be eight of those medium dogs that will go through to tonight's final. And we just wait for the overall again. Quality so high here at Crufts. Here is the, the overall. And in the medium section, it's it's seven dogs, Graham has just uh, told me, that are going to be going through tonight. And so that is probably down to Ashley Butler, although don't take that as 100% certain. That is our initial reading of it, that those seven will go through. But whatever you do, tune into that competition, because that is going to be absolutely thrilling later on in the day when we will decide Crofts Agility Champion. Presentation time then for the agility section of the Crufts Championship competition. The presentation is going to be made there to Charlotte Harding. Yep, Charlotte Harding and Teasel. Already a winner at Crofton looking to win again. And Ashley Butler. Up there as well uh, with Sullivan in the medium. Sean Illingworth with maybe winner of the mediums and Natasha Wise, serial winner here and still greedy for more. Natasha Graham is a huge fan and in the large. We look to Charlotte Harding with Scandal, the eight-year-old border collie, sixth time at Crofts, and looking to make it a winning visit as well. And Dave Munnings from Fame, winner of the large singles on Friday. Four tickets this year, going very well once again this Sunday morning. There will be the traditional lap of honour here. The arena's full. Feel the love. Feel the admiration, and we'll be seeing each and every one of these again later in the day, Graham. Can't wait, absolutely can't wait. Uh, we just hope we're going to get a really great crowd in. It was packed to the rafters last night. 
And I would say we're pretty much full again this morning. Really good to see great entertainment all day here at the arena. Well,